The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with Life Begins When You're in Love. Here's a letter from Alberta, Canada, written by a young wife who asks me not to mention her name, but who gives me full permission to read you this experience of hers. My husband came home the other day with a gelatin dessert not manufactured by the Jell-O company. Being a dutiful wife, I'm mumbling something about having just purchased three packages of Jell-O and let the matter drop. But I knew that this was my opportunity to prove that I know food values and quality in purchasing. So I made the gelatin dessert my husband had brought home, and I also made Jell-O. Jell-O gave me a more richly flavored, firmer dessert that sat in half the time. And now friend husband is thoroughly convinced that I know my business. Well, we're grateful to you, young lady, for sending us that letter. It bears out what I've so often said, that Jell-O's fine, fresh fruit flavor is tops in taste. No other gelatin dessert can equal the famous extra-rich fruit flavor of genuine Jell-O. But remember, there is only one Jell-O. So always be sure to ask for it by name. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. begins when you're in love, played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that violinist with the accent on vile, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> that was very funny, Don. Very humorous. <laughs> Evidently, you've been listening to Fred Allen again. Oh, yes, yes, I have, Jack. Did you hear him last Wednesday? Yes, Don, but only with my ears. My heart wasn't in it. <laughs> Any man that can stand before a microphone and say that I can't play a violin just isn't normal. That's all. <laughs> but, Jack, he didn't say that you couldn't play the violin. No? All he said was you shouldn't play it. <laughs> oh, I see. Say, Jack. Yes, Mary? All I heard him say was you couldn't play the violin at the age of ten. I'm glad you brought that up, Mary, because I've got a photograph of myself right here taken when I was ten years old playing the B on my violin. A very difficult number. Here, Mary, look. Hmm. Yeah, what do you think of that? I'm glad it's not a sound picture. <laughs> they didn't have them in those days. But, Jack, now how can we tell what number you're playing? Well, if you were a musician, you'd know. Say, who are you working for, anyway, Fred Allen or me? Jell-O. Oh. Well, let me tell you something. I played violin in concert halls long before I knew anything about strawberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. You left out raspberry. Yeah. I bet the audience didn't. <laughs> That's right. Give Alan more ammunition to work with. Let's see that picture a minute, will you, Mary? Yeah, look at it, Phil. You're a musician. That proves conclusively that I'm an artist. Well, Jack, anybody can have a picture taken with a violin. Yes, Phil, but look, can't you tell from the way I'm holding it that I can play? You're holding it upside down. Well, it's much harder that way. <laughs> anyway, I had a small chin, and I couldn't put the violin under it. Now you can put a cello under it. <laughs> That's so. Can I see the picture, too, too Jack? Why? Why two twos? <laughs> Why do, you, why do you want to see the picture, Kenny? Well, everybody else is getting laughs out of it. Yeah, you don't need it. Huh? <laughs> don't get cute, Kenny. And another thing, Fred Allen said I only had two strings on my fiddle. Imagine, that's what he called my Stradivarius, a fiddle. Is it a Stradivarius? That's not the point. <laughs> Anyway, you count, Mary, you count it, will you? How many strings do you see in this picture? A uh, four. See? A uh, three on violin and one around your waist. Well, that was to hold my trousers up. I was a poor boy in those days. That's what burns me up, Alan picking on a poor defenseless boy. Anyway, I don't want to discuss it any further. Hmm. I should stoop to argue with a toothpaste salesman. <laughs> Please, 
Well, you could use one. I said toothpaste, not toupee. <laughs> now, let's forget it. Say, Kenny, I want you to sing your song earlier tonight. It's very important. Hmm? Okay, Jack. Hmm, come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I want to take this opportunity of wishing you and your company a very, very happy New Year. <laughs> Say, what is it? How long are you going to keep coming here? Until I get paid. Goodbye. <laughs> Gee, is he going to stick around all year? It looks like it. Sing, Kenny. There's a little old church that's covered with moss Where I held your hand tenderly I often go there to gaze at the cross And dream you're there with me How I'd love to hear the organ In the chapel in the moonlight While we're strolling down the aisle in your eyes forever would shine till the roses turn to ashes till the organ turns to rock if you never come I'll still be there till the moon sung by Kenny Baker, and very good, too. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this moment, we have a great treat in store for you and a real surprise. A guest star who needs no introduction. Uh, No doubt most of you have read about the recent open golf tournament held right here in Los Angeles at Griffith Park. This tournament was won by Mr. Harry Cooper, whose sensational last-minute spurt will go down in golf history. His playing throughout the entire match was nothing short of phenomenal. And yet, Mr. Cooper remains the same modest, unassuming fellow he has always been. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it is my pleasure to present to you the man who was hit in the face with a divot, dug up by the club, held in the hands of Harry Cooper. None other than Mr. Oscar T. Fortu. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Fortu, it is a rare privilege to have you appear on our program. Thank you. I know how you feel. Hmm. Now, as I understand it, a week ago Saturday, you were hit with a divot. That is a clump of dirt thrown up by Harry Cooper's club. Is that correct? Yes, indeedy. <laughs> uh, tell me, Mr. Fortu, uh, how did you happen to get hit in the face with a divot? I forgot to pivot. <laughs> Well, I can hardly believe it. Uh, Would you mind telling me exactly how and where you were hit, if you'd be so kindly? 
Yes. <laughs> well, I was standing in the fairway facing Mr. Cooper. I see. And when he struck the ball, he dug up some turf which caught me kerplunk in the kisser. Oh, oh, yes. In fact, some of the dirt went in my nostrils and some of it went in my mouth. Well, well, and what did you say when that happened? I've got you under my skin. <laughs> Well, you showed great presence of mind. Yes, indeedy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Indeedy goes to town. Yes. Uh, tell me, Mr. Fortu, uh, do you do anything else besides getting hit in the face? Oh, very little. Oh. Of course, once in a while, I like a good kick in the pants. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. You get one if you hang around here. Quiet, Miss Livingston. Well, sir, it's been a great honor having you with us. And I hope we'll see you soon again <laughs> with more dirt than ever on your face. Well, thank you. Yeah, and here's mud in your eyes. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, I must hurry now as I'm going to see a movie and it uh, starts in a few minutes. Oh, what's the name of the picture? The Good Earth. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> ah, folks. What other programmy brings you these highlights? And now, ladies and gentlemen, going from the subnormal to the sublime, we will pick up the 11th chapter, and we hope the final one, of our original Western serial, Buck Benny Rides Again, or The Horse the Jack Built. Once more, I will enact the role of Sheriff Buck Benny, as tough an hombre as ever scratched his back with a wildcat. This will go on immediately after the next number. Play, Phil. <laughs> Production of the same name, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our play, Buck Benny Rides Again. In the opening scene, we find Buck on horseback approaching the home of Daisy Carson, his sweetheart. Curtain. Music. Get up, Get up. Whoa, partner, whoa. good horse, even if he is bald-headed. <laughs> hey, Buck! Buck! Well, I thought we'd find you here, Sheriff. Hello, deputies. What's wrong? Two of our guests broke out of jail. They did? Who were they? Fat Face Morrow and Slim Boulogne. Fat Face and Slim, eh? You better get after them. I'm on the trail of Fatty now. Now, where are you going, Baker? After the Thin Man. <laughs> well, go ahead, boys. Glad you're leaving with a lat. Come in. Well, hello, Daisy. Hello, tall, dark, and big ears. Well, gal, you can't exactly head into the wind yourself. (laughs) 
Can I fix you a little breakfast? No, thanks, but I am thirsty. Mind getting me a drink of water, Daisy? Sorry, Buck, but Pappy filled the well full of brandy. Hmm, just like him. Where is your Pappy? If he ain't in the well, he's down at Ike Muller's drinking breakfast. <laughs> Daisy, I'm glad I got a few minutes with you alone. You know, my ma's been thinking things over, and she asked me to ask you to marry me. How about it? Well, when you get home, tell your ma that you asked me, and I told you to tell her that I said no. Yeah, ma will be mighty disappointed. Wish I could say the same. Anyway, Buck, I told you once before that I can't ever marry you till Pappy passes on. Till so Pappy passes on, eh? Yep, but I don't mean out. I'd sure like to see that old cut-up. Help! Help! Get them elephants off my tray! Here comes Pappy now. Hello, Buck. Hiya, Frank. What you got in that bottle? Well, I stopped in at the drugstore and got myself some peroxide. Peroxide? Don't tell me you're going to drink that. Nope. Just thought I'd bleach my nose. <laughs> Good idea, Frank. You've been stopping traffic on Main Street long enough. Did you have your breakfast yet, Pappy? No, I ain't, Daisy. You got any eggs in the house? Sorry, but we're all out of them. Just. And I had my heart set on a gin omelet. That's too bad. Hmm? So long, Buck. Where you going, Pappy? If you want me, I'll be in the well. <laughs> Good old Pappy. There he goes. <laughs> well, gotta be running along, Daisy. You know, I still haven't found cactus face or your Pappy's stolen cows. But it won't be long now. By the time you find our cows, they'll be given gray milk. Don't worry, gal. You going to reconsider my ma's offer? No, Buck. Anyway, you got a rival now. I'm kind of stuck on somebody else. Oh, yeah? Well, I ain't jealous, Gal. But if anybody steps in between you and me, well... Well what? Just well, that's all. Just plain well. Are you calling me? No, Pappy. Jump back in. <laughs> Better be careful in that well, Frank. Don't worry, Buck. He swims like a fish, too. Well, that comes in handy. Come in. Hello, Daisy. Hello, chubby puss. <laughs> Here, Daisy, I brought you a box of chocolate. Mm. Thanks. That's the guy, yeah. Why, Annie, these pieces are all melted together. Well, make believe it's a chocolate bar and shut up. <laughs> See, you're cute. Mm, I'd never get away with that. Say, Daisy... My ma asked me to ask you to marry me. What do you say? Wait a minute, Andy. My ma asked me to ask Daisy first. Well, my ma likes Daisy better than your ma does. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and your ma better be careful because my ma packs a wicked rice. Well, my ma don't chop wood for nothing. Mind if I have a piece of candy? Help yourself, Buck. Fine. Hey, that's my candy. You, you keep, keep out, out of there. <laughs> now, let me tell you something, Andy. I'll answer that phone, Daisy. I'm expecting an important call. Hello? Yes? Who? Why, hello, Buck. It's Buck Jones. Buck Jones? Not that big Western movie star. Not another. Gee, I should have had my hair done. Mm. Have I got time to bite my nails? <laughs> Pardon the interruption, Buck. What's on your mind? Yes? Yes? Well, burn my britches and put me in thought. Thanks, Buck. See you later. So long. What is it? Buck Jones is down at the hotel fly in from out of Texas. And he said he just saw Cactus Face walking into the El Toro saloon. He did? Yeah, we better get on our horses, Andy, and head for Ensenada. Jones waiting for us at the hotel there. Goodbye, Daisy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Pappy. <laughs> And this time we're going to bring back Captain Faye's dead alive. Walk and he rides again. Oh, does Andy Devine. <laughs> Buck and Andy are now on the way to Ensenada. They may not find Cactus Face, but they will find Jello, and that's all I care about, because whether you're in the United States or Mexico, you can always get the genuine Jello with the big red letters on the box. No use rushing, Andy. We've got a long ride ahead of us. A long, tough trail. We sure have, Buck. You want to hear some music? 
Where are you going to get music? Well, I had a radio built in my horse. <laughs> well, tune her in, Andy. Tune her in. days have elapsed, and now we find Buck and Andy in Mexico approaching the quaint little town of Ensenada. I said Texas before, Andy. I meant uh, Mexico. Might as well clear that up with our listening audience. Sure has been a long trip, Andy. Yeah, mighty lucky we had that radio, Buck. Sure is. Tune her in again. Okay. Oh, Mr. Allen! Mr. Allen! Turn that off, Andy. Hmm. Say, Buck, yes? I'm worried. How are we going to get along down here in Mexico? Don't worry, Andy. I can speak the language like a native. Say, see those lights up ahead? That might be the Playa Ensenada Hotel. It might have that. Hmm, here comes a little Mexican girl down the road. I'll ask her. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Buenos dias, senorita. Donde esta el Hotel Playa Ensenada? Esta muy... It's that large white building right ahead of you. The one with the red tile roof. You can't miss it. Gracias, senorita. Gracias. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Mm. See, Andy, lucky I'm here with you. You sure understood her, Buck. Well, let's get going. We don't want to keep Buck Jones away. Okay, giddy up. Come on, partner. Come on. Whoa, whoa, partner. Whoa. 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 We nearly had a photographic finish. <laughs> Beautiful place, Andy. Let's go inside and talk to the clerk. Well, you'll have to do the talking, Buck. Okay. Oh, yeah. Come esta, senor. Dígame, por favor, si está hospedado aquí, el señor Bob Jones. Oh, yes, he's in room 201. I'll send for him immediately. Gracias, senorita. Or senor. Gracias. <laughs> you sure get along swell down here, Buck. Yep, I never have any trouble talking to a native. I only wish I could find one. <laughs> well, here comes Buck Jones now. Sure enough. Sure. Hello, boys. Oh, Buck, glad to see you. Sure, glad to see you too, Buck. You know Sheriff Andy Devine. Why, sure, we made a picture together now, quite a while ago. Remember that, Andy? Yep, and we had a lot of fun making it, didn't we? You know, Buck, I made a couple of pictures myself lately for Paramount, the big broadcast and college holiday. Did you see them? I don't know. Were they Western? <laughs> no, I stepped out of character for those. <laughs> Tell me, Buck, when you called me on the phone, were you positive you saw Cactus Face Elmer, the outlaw? No, I wasn't. What did you call me for? Oh, I just wanted to get on your program. Hmm. <laughs> well, I need a fellow like you to help me catch that varmint. Let's go into the bar and have a drink. Find out where the bar is, Andy. I can't speak the language here. Oh, that's right. I'll find out. Oye, portero, donde esta el café? Right down the hall. First door to your right. I said the bar room. Oh, second door to your right. <laughs> Come on, boys, let's go in. Well, you having a good time down here in Ensenada, Buck? Sure am, Buck. How about you? Well, I had a rough trip, Buck. 
No oh, more fuck in. up, fuck. No fuck. <laughs> My name is Andy. See if you can squeeze that in. Mm. <laughs> well, here we are, fellas. Have a drink on me. Well, mm. boys, bottle it be. Uh, I'll have a gin buck. What do you have, buck? I'll have a buck cardy. Mm. How about you, Sheriff? I'll have a Tom and Andy. That's Tom and Jerry. Well, let Jerry look out for himself. Say, fellas, come here a minute. That bartender looks kind of familiar to me. He does? Might be disguised. Wait a minute, I've got a hunch. Andy, you keep him covered while I talk to him. Okay, Sheriff. And Jones, you circle around the other side and keep him covered from there. Don't tell me what to do. I'm a real cowboy. (laughs) Oh, well, come on and play. I got a sneaking idea that it's Cactus Face, the fellow who stole Carson's cow. Hey, bartender. Yes, gentlemen. What did you do before you tended bars? I was in the milk business. Hmm, in the milk business, eh? Yes, sir. From cow to cocktail. <laughs> now listen, fellas. If this guy can't speak Spanish, we got our man. Hey, bartender. Que a conoce usted de esta lugar del país? Yo se los dicen sin Aha, quanto tiempo tiene trabajando aquí? Is that so? A svartioso vieja. I'm afraid we're on the wrong trail, boys. I'll try it once more. Esta segura que me dice la verdad de usted? Train in it, King Cop, and verga harget. Hoopsie. Hoopsie? It's Cactus Face. Grab him, boys. The lights are out. Watch that door. I got him, fellas. I got him. Wait a minute. Who's stepping on my hand? Get off of me, Sheriff. You're on my back. Can't help it, Andy. Buck Jones is on mine. Then who's on me? William F. Park. This floor show will not be continued next Sunday night. Will Buck get off Buck? Will Andy get off the floor? Will our sponsor tell us where to get off? Tune in next Sunday night and find out. Play, boys. time of the year when it's usually difficult to get something new and different into your menus. So here's one suggestion that is bound to give you that welcome touch of variety. Serve Salad Supreme. It's a delicious jello salad. Here's how you make it. Dissolve a package of lime jello in one pint of hot water and to chill until slightly thickened. Then fold in one cup of diced tart apples, one cup of chopped cabbage, and four finely chopped stuffed olives. After that, simply mold this grand combination and serve it on crisp lettuce with some real mayonnaise. It makes a wonderful salad, one that will add variety to any meal. But just be sure you make this salad with genuine Jell-O, for only Jell-O brings you that mellow, extra-rich fruit flavor. Remember to ask for the real thing. Insist on the one and only genuine Jell-O. number of the 16th program of the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night. Meanwhile, I want to thank all of our guests this evening. Hope we had as many listeners. Uh, Buck Jones of Universal, Andy Devine of Likewise, Patsy Flick of Warner Brothers, and... Uh, and Jack Benny of Waukegan. Hmm. You and his notches, folks. <laughs> Life begins when you're in love with from the picture of the musical round and round. 
The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston comes to you from the NBC studios in Hollywood. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. KFI, Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony, Incorporated. <laughs> 